everybody. Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Haven't been feeling too good over the last 24 hours or so. I'm trying to power through it and get through this video. Yesterday I was feeling absolutely awful. So apologies for no video yesterday. This is what I was going to do actually. But as we all know, life happens. With that being said, hope everyone's doing well. And hopefully everyone that's out towards the east is enjoying the fall weather. Because we're actually going to go ahead and take a look at what the seasonal outlook is showing us for the months of September, October, November, and even December. So we're going over our three month averages here. Keep in mind, and this is a disclaimer, this is not what every day is going to be like. This is based off of a 90 day average. So while you see temperatures that are likely to be above average here on the map for most of the entire lower than 48 at this point, and even some of you having higher probabilities of above average temperatures this is not tell the full story one place that i do have pretty good confidence in that being the case however might be over towards the four corner states in the southwest we are heading into a la nina fall and winter and usually la nina falls are not too dissimilar from the winter time pattern typically the northern states tend to have more in the way of activity when it comes to precipitation and usually will be cooler than average it can be a mixed bag as we go towards the southern states. Out west, it's usually going to be a bit warmer than average, but in particular, it's going to be also drier than average. And we definitely see a reflection of the above average temperatures already over here. Towards the northeast, while right now it's showing a 60%, maybe even up to 70% chance of above average temperatures here. This isn't really telling the full story. I do think there are going to be some sneaky cold blasts in there. And one thing that I like to do with these outlook maps is always look towards southern and southwestern Alaska. Because sometimes that can be a very good reflection of how that cold air could move. Because typically, whenever we have that cold air come into play here, you'll see it move somewhat in a direction like this. If I can get my, uh, if I can get my pin. All right had to fix that for a second sorry guys but typically the cold air will move in a direction similar to this and you have to remember that alaska is all the way up here so if you imagine it like this cold air typically will move in a direction similar to this and usually the northwestern states where you have that equal chance of above or below average temperatures comes into play there and sometimes with oscillations too we'll get that cold air to push out towards the east so while above average temperatures are very likely, especially towards the northeast, can't expect every day to be like that. Even for the uh, southern states here where that probability is pretty high as well, we're still going to have to keep an eye on that as well. I do think that we may have some pretty topsy-turvy type of months here, especially towards October. October we'll talk about a little bit later, and we're going to get more in depth as time goes on as we get later into this month. But again, we mentioned before, Typical of a La Nina fall in winter. North, northwest looking pretty active. Towards the eastern half of the country, especially the east coast, still looks like we're dealing with above average chances of precipitation. Another wild card that still comes into play is the tropics. We haven't been as busy, anywhere near as busy, I would actually say, as expected. There have been a couple of factors coming into play with that, and we'll talk about that more in the next tropical update, which will be tomorrow. But as you can see here, towards the uh, eastern half of the U.S., especially towards the east coast, have that 40 to 50 percent chance of above average precipitation. Even if we don't get the tropics in play here, it does look like the storm pattern itself that I mentioned in recent videos comes into play once again. But in any case, though, another uh, thing that I'm keeping an eye on, of course, is over towards Alaska, as we mentioned before. The same thing pretty much applies. Interestingly enough, though, it does look like towards the southern half of the state it does look slightly drier than average but i really think that's going to have more to do with the jet stream than anything else towards the western half of the state though it still looks pretty active so it really just depends on how much this part of alaska gets precipitation during this time of year but another thing that kind of links both the northwest and alaska over here is this tiny little pocket where we have actually above average precipitation there i do think that that might come into play Again, though, just a reminder, this is over a 90-day average, so it's not what every day is going to be like. I do feel like over towards the Four Corner States, over towards the Southwest, maybe in the Southern Plains, 
it's going to be a little bit drier than average though just in general because typically during the la nina fall and winter the storm track usually ends up being pretty far to the north here so usually leaves these areas and no pun intended high and dry so that being said let's go ahead and sneak over to october november and december and it's pretty much a similar signal i do think that we're still going to have some periods of warmth here and there especially again towards the four corner states at this point i don't know when exactly right now because obviously we're looking really far out into the future i do think the southeast ridge will come into play and keep parts of the south warm for some of you that is great news because you some of you absolutely cannot stand the cold others if you're like me i don't really care that much and then there's some that absolutely love the cold and live down to the south here but in any case though do expect some above average temperatures towards the southern half of georgia all the way down through florida as a whole here towards the carolina coast and even the gulf coast also over towards the northeast we can still expect above average temperatures probabilities have dropped just a little bit in comparison to that last map though towards the north even though this isn't really reflecting it well i do anticipate to see maybe especially in the next outlook maybe even the tiny little area of below average temps coming into play this is large part due to what i'm seeing over here towards alaska once again where that cold air is actually spread a bit in comparison to that last map where we we're showing september october november and the confidence has increased with it even at this point now too so something else to keep an eye on there as far as the precipitation outlook is concerned starting to see that spread in moisture now towards the northwest and also in the northeast too this is again like i mentioned before definitely the la nina fall and winter calling card here and just as we mentioned that last outlook over here towards the southern plains here is where we have that below average chance of precipitation here pretty similar signal here also towards alaska again like i said before not telling the entire story of how all of the all 90 of these days could turn out but this increased probability over here 50 to 60 percentile maybe even 60 to 70 uh, tells a lot for this area this is not uncommon for texas though and then you guys know how to deal with this by spring most likely we might have a chance to recover here so that being said let's go ahead and actually take a look at what our models are looking like here in particular what we're looking at on this one is not really what's going on in the u.s and the lower 48 north america in general it's really going to be what's going on in several spots this is going to be one of them this is another one here and then there's another one over here towards greenland these are oscillations and points where we could be looking for stratospheric heating stratospheric heating sometimes can lead to those two accursed words polar vortex so it's always something that we have to watch for especially as we get later into the fall and into the winter so this could of course bring below average temperatures into the equation as well so interesting thing to make note of here do have a positive arctic oscillation a positive ao this does sometimes a lot for cold well actually a lot of the time it'll, it'll a lot for cold air to come into play for the u.s here and this is of course over a 30-day average see this nice little blob of cold air over towards northern canada with that oscillation it does have a chance of sneaking its way down into the into the northern states here so that's why i'm kind of, i've kind of been side eyeing that in both of those outlooks i do think that there could be a slight change to below average um below average temperatures here almost said precipitation and then look what happens in november this is a big deal right here start to see a negative ao kind of come into play but there's already cold air kind of dropping out this is this is the AO, I think, maybe kind of balancing itself out here. So big cold air expected towards the eastern half of the U.S., maybe through the entire month of November. Like I said, it's not what every day could be like, but considering that this might be the average here, definitely something that we're going to need to pay close attention to. I do think this affects the weather pattern as a whole here. Severe weather could come into play. And then also December looks pretty interesting as well, but it looks like it's going to be shifting back out towards the west. We do have a negative NAO here over towards Greenland, so I do think the northeast will still be pretty chilly as we head into the month of December here. So something to keep an extra close eye on as well. 
so this is what the temperature map will show a reflection of as we go forward here so you can see this is october still expecting mostly above average temperatures but again like i said before significance is still to be questioned at this point we're maybe about a degree celsius so it could be about 10 maybe up to 20 degrees difference at best with some of these i do think that uh, there are going to be some areas in between certain weeks where we're dealing with low average temperatures so this is still variable but i would say that right now that it doesn't look like october is going to be terrible for a lot of us i don't expect to see much in the way of record highs there could be some record lows morning should be nice but we may deal with a lot of average days over here so we get towards november this is the big month Look at how much of a difference we have here over towards the northeast, the Great Lakes, and even parts of the northern tiers of the Midwest here. About 10 to 15 degrees below average, maybe even 20. Even greater below average temperatures over towards Canada. Not much to be surprised here. I do think by this point, the southeast ridge may come into play here for the deep south here. I don't know how significant that will be, of course. We're still looking months out in advance. But this does kind of make me wonder if by some point towards late october early november i honestly would want to go as far as to say maybe mid to late november this might come into play here then we show the reflection of december and we're starting to deal with much more warmth towards the deep south here a little bit of cold air trying to sneak in here and there over towards the northern states it does lead me to wonder though what could happen if these two end up colliding that could be a big question in regards to severe weather I'm not trying to scare anyone but we know that thunderstorms are caused by a collision of warm and cold air masses so i'm watching this very closely so that being said now let's go ahead and take a look at our precipitation map here and this will be the final map we're looking at here as you can see not much in the way of moisture over here for the month of uh, october here we're expecting mostly uh equal chances or below average for good chunks of the u.s here but if we get into november that's when we start to see that see a uh, more quiet pattern start to take shape here unless you're over towards the northeast and depending on when that cold air mixes in there could be chances of snow as early as october late october maybe early november and that could be uh prominent through the rest of the month here you get towards december and this kind of solidifies my uh concerns a bit with a more active weather pattern and maybe severe weather chances of seeing the above average chances of precipitation here on this model here we also see the increase of precipitation out to the west here too so that kind of piques my interest in particular with maybe the chance of an atmospheric river returning it's not uncommon that this has happened this has been happening in the last couple of years we're going to be of course monitoring that as we go further beyond as well so these outlooks tend to usually come during the middle of each month here and then sometimes we'll do a review of this if if it's needed so like i said within the next couple of weeks you can expect a new outlook so this will be the second to last outlook for fall here and we'll probably start to do the winter outlooks really soon here but this is all I got for you guys. I hope you guys found this one useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. Be ready for changes of the weather because they are indeed coming. So if you haven't felt it already, you will be soon. That being said, take care and have an awesome rest of your day.